Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Good morning, everyone. Oh, there you are. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's breathe and let's begin the broadcast. Oh, yes. A big deep cleansing breath. That was fun. So it worked the other day. I don't know what happened today, but hey, everybody, welcome. Thanks for being patient. It has been some week here at the Hello Summit, right? The Change Your Mind and Change Your Life Summit that has been presided over by the fabulous Cornelia Stephanie. So thanks for being there with us through all the tech glitches. You know, Cornelia, I have to bring your bio up so that I can introduce you because we lost that in all of this kerfluffle. So here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about Miss Cornelia Stephanie. She's a spiritual teacher. She's a business and success coach. She helps women to be the authority in all areas of their lives as they reclaim their personal power. She mentors women to live their life dreams by being intentional in creating their future. As the CEO of her own coaching and consulting business, she helps conscious entrepreneurs to be seen and heard while creating a larger impact. Cornelia is a spiritual teacher located near Seattle, Washington. She's a TV and radio host with a media platform at Transformation Talk Radio in Seattle, Washington. So, Cornelia, you have been here all week hanging out with us, making everyone come forth and bring their very best. So today is our chance to shine the spotlight on you. We have watched you stay calm, cool, and composed when challenges like speaker illnesses and tech glitches and yeah, another one showed up. But you know, I know you, and I know there was a time in your life when things were really different. And in fact, you actually lived under the shadow of suicide, which is so hard for me to believe as I know you and see you today. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Sure. Um, yeah, it's, I just want to say it's been an incredible week. You know, I've grown so much this week with all the speakers, with, with their amazing, dynamic, uh, wisdom and gifts that they they've brought to the summit and I, I I have absolutely grown so much myself and expanded that's the word I was trying to look for the word expanded I've expanded by the speed of light and so uh, when you're talking to me about the shadow of suicide is that I came in to this incarnation with uh, I was a suicidal soul, and one of my one of the the things that I mean I know this today, but at the time in my early part of my life, when I tried to commit suicide many times, when I wanted to take action on on doing that 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 was at the time I was not conscious that I wanted to um, kill myself other than knowing that, okay, I want to kill myself, but I wasn't conscious like I am today. Like today I can't even remember really uh, or even imagine ever that I would ever want to take my own life and that I would want to kill myself because I totally have healed myself from that core wound. And that core wound was an emotional core wound that was so deep. It, it was almost like, you know, Deborah, because you channel the, the you're the voice of the Akashic Records. The, the, the emotional core wound was so deep that this came in from another life. I came in with this. And um, this was almost like, uh, 
um, was she going to actually, was I going to actually be able to overcome it in this life? Because it, it wasn't, it, this wasn't known for sure. We, we didn't, we didn't, we, the, the consciousness of who I am and, and my soul group, we didn't know if that was actually, if I was going to actually be able to overcome it. But I can tell you right now, like in, in, in looking back into my history of how many times I actually tried to take my own life and how many interventions there were, divine interventions by my angels, by my guides, by my soul group, my team of people that, that, that stood by me or that the divine, that God, whatever you want to call it, sent to intervene to make sure you know it's like you know like when an accident is about to happen or whatever and an angel comes in and prevents the accident from happening these kinds of things happen throughout the my entire journey of when i when i when i try to commit suicide many times and i remember one time in specific uh that i was in the hospital and this was um, in my, I want to say probably early thirties, maybe, maybe not even 30 yet. And I was in the hospital and I was getting ready to have my gallbladder taken out and the gallbladder today, the way that I believe and what the gallbladder represents is being able to digest life. So even back then in my early thirties, or I wasn't even 30 yet, I already had a diseased gallbladder, a diseased gallbladder, because I just couldn't digest life. I just could not digest it. So back then, if I would have known back then what I know today, how we can heal and how we can recover and how we can heal, you know, our bodies, I would never have allowed them to take my gallbladder out. But at that time, I didn't know that I didn't know that. So I'm going into the hospital and the night before I go into the hospital, I, I still had that suicidal, that, that a preoccupation, if you will, uh, of emotion where I always um, felt like I could take action towards it. Action on it, meaning that the emotion was activated and when an event would occur or something in my life where I was triggered, where it, the pain just became too unbearable, too much, I wanted out. That's what it was. It was that I wanted out. There was so much pain that I had to look at in my own foundation from my childhood, my upbringing, what, what I was overcoming. And then with what was going on in, in life that I was constantly being faced with this, this, this feeling. And that's why I know today, I mean, I have been, I've overcome this suicidal wound now since uh, September 17th of 1993 was the last time that that ever happened. And since that time, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I never succeeded. Oh my God. Going back to the hospital now, the night before I I'm, I'm going into the hospital that, you know, I was, I was not in a very good place at all. And I was thinking to myself, well, guess what? I'm going to the hospital tomorrow. They're going to remove my gallbladder. And now I'm going to just have them kill me instead of me doing it because they're going to put me under anesthesia. So that night I ended up doing drugs and ended up staying up all night and in the hopes that I would never wake back up again. I went in with that intention to the hospital. So when, uh, when I went in, they didn't know this, right? They didn't know. I, I came in, I went in under anesthesia. And then all of a sudden, after the surgery was over, they had a hard time to wake me up. So, and at the time, I was estranged from my family because... I was always burning bridges in my life. I was always burning bridges. And at the time, I wasn't communicating with my family. So I, my, my boyfriend's family 
was the, the the people on the list to call if there was a problem with with me and so they were called to come to the hospital to speak to me to speak to me to wake up to come back to life to sit at my bedside and ask me to wake up because they said she should already be awake by now but she's not coming back to consciousness. She's not waking back up. And so my boyfriend's family came to speak to me and, and, and call me back to life, if you will. And they were there. And then when I woke up, I woke up and I was like, shit, I'm still here. You know, is that kind of feeling? It was yes. Like, God, you know, why am I still here? So this is the kind of intervention that has happened every time. I mean, it's like, it was these kinds of things. So no matter what I would try to do, it just, it just didn't happen. And you know what, Deborah, I just can't imagine what, 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 you know, what the intervention, the, 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 how hard the angels have had to work, the divine has had to work to keep me alive, to keep me um, from succeeding because I was pretty, pretty clever. I was pretty clever. So, and it was in September 17th of 1993 when I had the most amazing um, intervention because that is actually when I went straight to God is when I actually went to God and I said, okay, this is it. I can't do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore because I am looking for you. I can't find you in the churches. I can't find you in religion. I can't find you anywhere. And I cannot live here on this planet and continue on staying here if I cannot know that you exist. This is what I, you know, so I was pleading and crying and giving an ultimatum, if you will, to God. It was like, you know, I was in my living room and I was having um, the most, I was, I was having the most um, amazing meltdown, breakdown, and asking God to, to show me that there is life and that there is, a, there is a reason for this madness and to allow me to feel the presence of God within me. I, I, I wanted that proof and that was the only way that I could actually live and make it in this life. That's really what happened. And it was, it was like a four hour of, of surrendering my life to the divine, of to God, to whatever that was. Please let me feel you. This, you know, please let me feel you. Please let me know that you exist because I can't do this. I can't find you anywhere. And so this was in, 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 in 1993. And in 1987, for those of you that know what the harmonic convergence is, Harmonic Convergence is, was, um, you can Google this and to find out more about the Harmonic Convergence, but Harmonic Convergence was a clarion call that was happening here on planet Earth, where many um, beings were being awakened to bring in the feeling paradigm, to bring in the feeling paradigm. And so uh, me pleading and begging and crying and asking God to please let me feel you was part of that and I was willing to surrender my life to it that I don't I will not stay here and do this in this world that is so filled with pain that is so filled with disease that is so filled with war that is filled so I cannot find you anywhere I need to be able to feel you and so in 1993 is when the feeling paradigm in my world was born because that is, is when um, I, I made an ultimatum with our divine presence, with, with God, with source consciousness. At the time, I didn't know it was source because I didn't even know what to call it. But I made a, a deal and I said, if you let me feel you and if you 
let me know that you exist. I will surrender my life to you and I will trust and have faith and I will have faith and trust that you exist and that there is a madness to this life. That, so that's what I was willing to do. And I, I've never read the Bible. I don't know anything about the Bible, but um, many people say that, you know, there's stories in the Bible that, that talk about Job or other people in the Bible that have surrendered their life to God and that, you know, that this was one of those mystical experiences. And, and um, what happened that afternoon, that faded afternoon, is when I was surrendering and had this, this amazing deep, deep, deep breakdown, breakdown. And then I went to sleep for two days. I went to sleep for two days. And during that time is when the Holy Spirit was coming into my sphere, into my physical body, into my knowing. And I, how do you describe what the Holy Spirit is? It's, it's, it's very hard to describe that. The only thing I can say, it's almost like um, grace is, is, is the best word that I can say. It's, it's, it's grace. It's 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 feeling of grace it's i mean feel what what it, what grace means to you it's that it's the holy spirit it's it's grace so during those two days i was asleep for two days and here is the holy spirit now enveloping me enveloping me with grace and when i woke up from my sleep for two days i had a knowing within me that now I have what it is that I was looking for. I have the grace. I trust and I know that God is within me. I have the feeling. And I told, I did say to God, source, I did say that if you let me feel you, I will do, I will be and do whatever you want. I, I, am, I am yours. I am yours. And it was amazing because after that feeling, after that two day experience, what ended up happening was I became homeless. Everything, all of my belongings, everything I had was taken from me. And as I was going through that experience, you would think that if that would have happened to me before my meltdown and before my breakdown and before my promise to the divine that I'm with you, that I would have been in a state of panic. But as I was becoming homeless and going through uh, having everything taken from me, I simultaneously knew that this was a karmic clearing of the highest order. And everything, all my karma was being cleared. Everything that I've done in my past, was all being cleared. And now I get to really practice what I asked for. And that is to live in faith and to be in faith and to have a clean slate. And I asked for source energy for God to let me feel you. The feeling paradigm was born in me. And now there was a clearing that was happening. And there was... Um, and I was not afraid. I was not afraid. I was, uh, I, I, I was in a hotel. I went to a hotel because I, I lost my apartment. I was homeless, all of these things. I, I was, I, I, and then, then a hotel became available. And then I went to a hotel. And in that hotel, I met a, a woman came knocking on the door and she was amazed. She was the maid and she was an undercover angel that God sent. She was an angel that came and she said, I know you've been here for a while now. Can I, can I clean your room for you? And, and I said, no, that's okay. You know, I, I've got it. And then she said, you know, if you need anything, she said, I just want to tell you that I have a room for rent in my house. And if you need anything, I would love to, um, I would love to rent you a room in my house. A, 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 an angel comes knocking on the door and saying that, right? And I ended up moving to Linda's house, to Linda and Vi. 
I ended up moving to their house, two angels that God sent to me right after the feeling paradigm. This was in December, three months after September, that, that faded time. And um, I ended up staying with Linda and Vi for one year. And these two angels, these two women that were strangers to me, that God sent to me, they, I was able to heal and recover after being homeless and after going through a huge cleansing. Not only that, but my body was also going through a huge cleansing. During that time, I had hives, hives, to where my skin was burning from the inside out. I mean, I had lesions in my, on my skin that was like, like, like a half an inch out when I would go to the emergency room for them to look at because I couldn't move because my skin was raw. It was all cleansing, it was all karma, it was all cleansing. When I went to the emergency room, they, um, they, they, you know, they gave me steroids. They tried to give me steroids to, to, to keep the inflammation down, but it was all a cleansing and I knew that I was going through that. So Linda and Vi were the ones that, um, the angels that were sent after I had this breakdown and after I had Grace come in and after I asked for the Holy Spirit, I didn't ask for the Holy Spirit, but I asked for to fill the presence of God in my life. And I said, if you let me feel you, then I can stay then I can do this. Because prior to, I was in the hospital and I couldn't digest life, so my gallbladder was being removed because it was too painful as a super sensitive psychic empath. So this is what I had to overcome as a suicidal soul, and that's why I know that people that commit suicide and that want to commit suicide, it's an emotion that they're acting on, and they don't have to act on that emotion, that it's not really that they want to kill themselves and harm themselves and do harm to themselves. That's the last thing in the world they want to do. It's that they want to kill the pain. That's, that's what they want to kill. And so that is my suicidal story. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. It's incredibly powerful. And I know there will be people who will see this who perhaps might have their own let go, let God moment as you did. And you have just demonstrated so beautifully that when you change your mind, miracles come in and you change your life. And then look where you are now. Who would have ever thought that suicidal woman who couldn't even wake up after surgery, she was so far gone, would be this powerful star maker that you are today. So I'm really excited to share some more of your story with the audience. You talk a lot about championing the humanity sovereignty to have the, their own authority over their life so that they can be empowered creators. Now, because I'm a metaphysical person, I understand that, but you know there are a lot of people who don't. Could you elaborate? So, yes, yeah, so championing uh, humanity sovereignty is when I, when I say that, it's a projection that I'm putting out that I, that I want for all of us. It's because what is what I've done for myself. And what does being sovereign mean? So because I found out what that means to me, um, now I want that for everybody else. Because isn't it always what it is that we need to learn ourselves? We then teach it to other people, right? Yes. And so... Part of my, my um, journey now is remembering and awakening to the truth of who I am. And everything I've done for myself is what I help other people do. So when I'm talking about championing humanity's sovereignty, what does being sovereign mean? So I know what it means to me, but I want to ask the audience, what does sovereignty mean to you? Because as you also said, the authority over one's own life. And that is that you are the authority over your life. Nobody else. There is nobody else that has the authority over you unless you give it to them. And in our past world, we've given our power away 
to outside sources, whether it's been to our parents, whether it's been to our doctors, whether it's been to our community, what, whatever, our boyfriend, our friends, our family, our spiritual leaders. And um, today, in today's modern day world, it's really, really important that you are your own authority because you already have all of the codes, all of the knowing inside of you. You are um, fully equipped, fully capable to know for yourself what is right for you. You know, it doesn't mean that you're not going to ask people for support or ask people for help, but really being your own authority, knowing what something means to you, knowing what abundance means to you, knowing what prosperity means to you, knowing what freedom means to you, knowing what, um, knowing what it is that you want, knowing what fulfillment means to you. All of these various things. So what, do, what, what is sovereignty? Sovereignty is being sovereign, meaning self-governing, self-ruling, the authority over yourself. Because you're looking at an ex-people pleaser here. Is that I've always tried to, you know, people please and make sure that everybody's happy that I'm, you know, not going to set off any bombs or, you know, don't get people pissed off and don't, you know, don't, don't rock the boat, if you will. And claiming back my power, claiming back my authority, claiming back my power through the discovery process of knowing what these things mean to me, knowing how I feel about things, knowing what abundance means, knowing what, what all of the things mean, knowing what sovereignty means to me. That's what I want for other people to, and I champion humanity, sovereignty, the authority over one's own life as empowered creators. Is that clearer now, Deborah? Yeah, I think so. And a couple of people have written in to talk about it that, yeah, Savannah says that it means trusting her intuition so that she can know the directions and whether what she's desiring is actually in alignment with her soul, that it's right for her. And Carlinia is talking about operating in alignment with divinity. Yeah, that's the same theme. So they're getting it, absolutely. And Autumn says, speaking my truth, not what other people want her to say. Absolutely, Autumn, that is perfect. Yeah, it's being true to who you are as the soul, stepping away from the ego and embodying your soul's purpose. And you're just doing that so beautifully. Now, you also talk a lot about stepping out of the shadow into the light, which is so perfect when you take the segue from our conversation earlier about that huge shadow you lived under of suicide. So I can see why this is so important to you. And you've got six points you want to talk about. So can we just do a, a real rapid round here and go through those six points? Sure. Awesome. So the first one is, why is it important to work with the shadow? The shadow is where the gold is. The shadow is where your divinity lies. The shadow is where the healing um, can happen. And when you embrace the parts of yourself that have never been loved, that have never seen the light of day, that have never been acknowledged, that have never been left free, when you embrace the shadow, that's where the gold is. That's actually where God is or whatever your higher power is. That's where source energy is. That is where the gold is. It's in the shadow. Because the truth is that we are not victims. We are empowered creators. That's the truth. The truth is, is that we are sovereign. It's just that we're, we're, we're going to the shadow to claim back, reclaim back all of those parts of ourselves that we have given our power away um, over lifetimes, this lifetime and other lifetimes, because, you know, we're healing our ancestral lineage. We're healing. Um, we're, we're recovering a, a lot of a, a lot of ground, I should say. So really, as far as when it, when it comes to the shadow, it's where you're not feeling good enough. And that is where the gold is. The, the gold is in the shadow. And actually, God is in the shadow. Yeah, I see that as that little child who's cowering in the closet, afraid. Yes, and not feeling good enough. What about the shadow and projection? Ah, this is a really good one, the shadow and projection, because I, I, this is a, a beautiful, uh, you know Carl Jung, right? Yes. 
Carl Jung says, it's a psychological law that what we will not suffer inwardly through conscious recognition of our shadow, we will suffer outwardly as a result of our unconscious projections into the world and around us. He thereby gives people the most awesome charge that they can possibly receive throughout their lives. The withdrawal of their own projection upon others and dealing with their own shadow themselves. Our relationships, our family, our work, the events in the world offer us the perfect opportunity to release this old dense energy from the body and reclaim our power. Working with the shadow, the questions are, what and who are your triggers? What are your relationships mirroring to you? And so I just see a lot of people when they put the projection outside of themselves, we, we project the shadow onto another person or onto an event so that we can see it. So then when we see the shadow, then it's important to call it back and, and, and claim it back and claim it free, right? And love it free. So what I want to say to people is that uh, when you project the energy out onto another person, you're doing that unconsciously and to not to, to, to really bring your consciousness to it now and, and, and say, I will not project the energy out onto another person because really, what is that person mirroring to you? What am I mirroring to you? So I, I say this to a lot of the women that I work with, you know, when I work with people on the radio or I work with people in self-development or I work with people, um, you know, anyone really is because I'm a catalyst. And so I ask people, what is it that I'm mirroring to you that you, you don't like? She's too what? She's too much. She's too loud. Her voice is too this. She's too this. She's too this. She's too this. Whatever that is, look at that because that's a, a shadow projection. And, and look at that and then realize, my gosh, this is, this is a projection that you're projecting onto me. And that is a big piece of the shadow. And again, remember that the shadow is where your divinity is. That is where the gold is. That is where the healing can happen. Does that make sense? Yes. So now tell us about the shadow and the uninvited feminine. The shadow and the uninvited feminine is where um, that's a really, that's a mission of mine. It is a mission of mine because the uninvited feminine is a part. I don't know, were you part of yesterday's talk when, when Donna was uh, doing that mindset shift? And yes, she, I was driving and I was listening. Okay, so she did that. She did that. Um, she had me, um, you know, think of a problem or something that I have. And the uninvited feminine is the part in all of us that have never been seen before, that have never been heard before, that have been, that, that are part of this patriarchal society, and we have been uninvited to the party. And we're being triggered inside of ourselves to, um, to not feel included, to not feel included. And how does that all happen? Through the events that that we um, that we have happening in our life, whether it's a, a small inner circle, in a group, in an event, wherever you don't feel invited, that part in you that 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 uninvited feminine that is ready to come to the party. She is ready to be seen. She is ready to be bold. She is ready to be invited to the party because she is the one that's going to say, I exist. I exist and I am here and you will see me. You will celebrate me. I am here. It's that part. It's like, I, I speak of her as the Black Madonna. It's the goddess of the underworld that has never, you've heard me talk about this privately to you before, Deborah, where I've talked about the Black Madonna. Just this week, I was triggered with this energy in a family situation 
where I wasn't invited and I wasn't included. And right away, so when Donna was saying, you know, at what scale is it? Where are you at an eight? And I'm so tired of telling this story. I don't want to see it anymore. It happened to me. It, 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 it's happened to me. And, and I know why it's happening. It's happening so that the divine feminine that is, it's the Western woman, like the Dalai Lama says, that is leading the, um, the world. It's the Western woman. So it's the divine feminine, all of us, that hasn't um, been seen, that hasn't been heard, that hasn't been invited. And that is who I stand for. I am fierce in clearing that energy. And I know we're not done yet. We're not done because there is more events that are going to be occurring over this next year, especially with uh, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in astrology of what we're going to be up against with um, the things that are changing on the planet. So the uninvited feminine is the one that I stand for, the black Madonna that has never been invited to the party, that hasn't been seen first, that hasn't been acknowledged. And every time when it happens in my life for me, it's like another one of those layers. It's another, it's another part. And all of us have this energy, especially women, especially the women. Think back, ladies, in your own life right now where you haven't been invited to the party, where you feel excluded. Think of those times and, and see where do you feel that that is happening at and resolve right here and right now to be fierce, to invite her to the party. Because how do we do that? We make it conscious and we know, we clear it. Because you know what? She's pissed. That uninvited energy is pissed and she's pissed off. And if she's pissed off, if that's happening inside of myself, then I have to be the one that, that clears that. And then you, you clear that anger, you clear that energy out so that you can um, bring harmonious peace into your physical body. And it's happening through an event, through an experience of what's taking place. And then you have the conversation with the party and you can tell somebody, I don't feel included. I feel left out. I don't feel like I'm part of. I don't feel like. And it's really helpful when you have those boundary conversations, simply because um, it, the other people that are the triggerers, they also learn from it and heal at the same time. That's beautiful. So what about going deep and how long should it take when we work on our shadow? Well, that depends because it depends on when you're done. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people, I, I dive all the way to the bottom of the ocean and I will uh, unearth all the jewels. I'll turn over all the rocks and I will go deep and I will look at everything to where somebody else will be looking at me and they'll, go, they'll be going, you're still talking about that? Why are you still talking about that? Because I'm not done. Because I'm not done because I'm over here looking at all the rocks and I want to make sure that I get everything. And there's, I'm so deep. I go deep. So some people in my life, they may not go as deep as I go. And then that's the reason why I can tell you this is that how long should it take? It should take however long it takes you to overturn all the rocks and make sure you got it all because this is your universe this is your creation you are the authority of your life and how long it takes when you're grieving and when you're crying and when you're processing it's your timeline nobody can rush you through grief nobody can rush you through a timeline and saying shouldn't take you this long or why should it take you this long and and whatever so being able to communicate and know that if you want to go deep and however long it takes you, that's how long it takes you. So number five in your process is the shadow and empowerment. And it sounds like you've already told us a lot about the empowerment, but tell us a little more. Well, the empowerment piece is, you know, this has been my journey. I've been one of those people. I've given my power away to my friends, my family, my, 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 my business, my work. And, you know, in, in so many different areas of my life, I've given my power away. And when I was awakening to this, this part of me where I realized, oh, I'm giving my power away here. In particularly, it started in 2011 is when I really started claiming my power back. 
So I went to my friend who I had given my power away to. And I said to her, I, I've given you my power and I'm not going to do it anymore. And now I'm claiming it back. And at first, when I had that conversation, that conversation did not go over well at all. It didn't go over well. But prior to me showing up at her house, I called in the angels and I called in the team and I said, listen, guys, masters, please surround us with love. Please surround us because I know what happens. I've been giving my power away to this person and, and now I'm going to claim it back. How do you think that person's going to respond? How do you think that person's going to feel when I've been giving that person my energy and now I'm taking it back? And I'm telling you I'm doing it. Why? Because I love you, I value you, you and I want to continue on having a relationship with you. So I started doing that in all areas of my life, including my spirituality. And that's a whole nother topic, a whole nother show. But I want to let the audience know today that as far as your empowerment, here's your mantra. I claim back all of my power, all that I lost, all that I've given away in any time, space, or dimension, as it was, as it is, and as it shall be. And so you want to, this again, is the, is the uninvited feminine that's claiming her power back from this patriarchal uh, masculine um, paradigm that we have been uninvited to and you get to claim back your power and I speak to this because you know that I speak to divine truth and I am a whistleblower of sort can you imagine when I wasn't speaking to this because I was afraid I'm gonna piss people off can you imagine um, you know what um, how, 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 how that was I was tiptoeing around now mind you my reputation, the reputation that I have, and as with, with the people that I'm working with and the people that work with me and my, my team, people know that I am one of the most generous, kind, loving people that they know because I, that's my intent. That is my absolute intent. But it's also my intent to be true to who I am not give my power away. And I'm willing to have the conversations with people that need to be had when we need to have that tough conversation. But do it with love. Yes. Now Donna says, can you repeat the mantra again slowly? Okay. I claim back all of my power. All that was taken away. All that I gave away. All that I lost. That's perfect. I claim back all of my power now from any time, space, or dimension. I claim it all back to me now as it was, as it is, and as it shall be. And ladies, if you use this mantra in energy, in any energy situation that you find yourself in where your victim is present, where you're not acting like the empowered creator that you are, I guarantee you that you will then bring into that space, into the space that Susan Axelrod was talking about. She was talking about bringing that confidence into that space, bringing that power into that space. If you do that, that's really how I claimed back my power. It's what I do. I don't look outside of myself for approval. I don't look outside of myself. I go in because it's all in here. And that's one of the things that I inspire others to do too, to become their own authority, to look inside of themselves because you already have everything you need within you. So there's one more item on your shadow list and our minutes are dwindling down fast. So let's get that sixth item and then we will go on to talk about your exclusive offer. So tell us about the shadow and new boundaries. Well, I did touch on, on that a little bit is, you know, when you're, when you're claiming back your power in relationships that you want to stay in is also, you know, 
being clear about what your boundaries are, communicating your boundaries that, hey, I used to do this and now I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to, this is important that I have my space. It's important that I need some processing time. It's important that I'm doing this. You know, it's, it's like communicating your new boundaries. It's important to communicate them where before you've given it all away. And now when you're claiming it back, you're claiming that shadow part back, especially when you're still working with people that that are with you from your past or you are reestablishing a relationship with people that you love. So it's important to communicate those boundaries and be fearless in it because there is nothing to fear. It's like you have to set the stage of how you want this to be now. That's perfect. Thank you. So one thing I know about you that I'm not sure everybody else does is you told us about coming through the fire. You come into this place of embodying your gifts, and now you are helping other lightworkers and entrepreneurs, healers, coaches, what have you, to find their own shining light, to step out of the shadows into that spotlight, no matter the old fears that were holding them back. And what I've observed is you have this unique talent of helping them to go deep in with themselves, to find those gems that they have waiting to come out and share with the world. You are a beautiful development agent, and you are offering a fabulous exclusive offer that is not available anywhere else, and it is like the, the biggest bargain I have seen to work with you so that these people can be seen, those who are ready to step into the spotlight. So tell us about that. So... There's a, there's an exclusive offer that I that I made available just for this summit, and that is for people that want to work with me on the radio, people that have their message and that want to bring their message out to the world, or you have a product, or you have something to say, or you know what whatever it is, everything that we talked about here with the shadow, the emotional work, the empowerment, all of those things naturally get resolved. In working with me so that's also another reason why when people work with me they go with me on the radio or they um, work with me in personal development these are the things that we work on so I created eight slots eight special slots for anyone that now wants to get their message seen and heard out in the world through transformation talk radio and then also I have a new other platform that I'm going to be rolling out very shortly that's called Jaguar TV and so for the summit here, I created eight slots that I think it's $9.97 for six, for six radio slots together with me. You have to look at the, the offer. I think that's what it is for six slots for $9.97. And you can also split payments and make payments with um, if you want to split that in half. And here's the beautiful thing about that is the uninvited feminine, the part of you that has never seen the light of day to have a space, to have a platform for her to be seen, for her to be heard, for you to get your message out, a professional platform for you to attract your five star clients, for you to receive the income that it is that you're looking for in working together with me. I created a special offer. It is only for this summit. It's not something that I offer outside of here. And it is, it's, so everybody, you know, needs to, needs to know that. So is that, is that clear? That's clear. And you also have a free offer that's for everybody who's participating. Yes, I think the free offer that I have is a PDF of the Keeper of the Garden course. The Keeper of the Garden course is a 21-day journaling of um, how you can work on releasing your emotions so that you can see what energy you're projecting onto your family, onto your community, so that you can see your projection, that you can look at your gratitude every day, five things that you're grateful for, for 21 days. And if you do the Keeper of the Garden with the free PDF for 21 days, you can really change your reality right now and make peace with your past. That's what that is. But I also have, for those of you that want the audio course, you want to listen to my 
meditative voice, not my loud voice right here, by the way, but my meditative voice where I have 21 audio recordings. You can also get that at my website at corneliastephanie.com. Go to the top. It says Keeper of the Garden. Click on that and you can purchase the Keeper of the Garden there for $21. That is fabulous. So everybody should rush and grab that now and start changing your life. Start getting into that space of letting go and let God and expand into the beautiful purpose that you came here. Now, you had something you wanted to talk about that's really important to you. I don't know how long it might take, so I think we're going to segue right into that. And if there's time, then we'll come back to other questions. So, Cornelia, tell us, what do you believe the world needs? Is love. Sweet love, <laughs> it's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love. And here, don't we always have time for love? I mean, this, this is it. What does the world need is love. The world needs play. The world needs the divine feminine, inspired, sharing her passion, sharing her song, sharing her gifts with the world. The world needs that breaking out in song and to, you know, um, to shine that light. And the world needs you to share your love. That's, that's what's important. That is so beautiful. And the uh, audience here is just cheering you on. They love it. You're shining. Sing it out, Cornelia. You're getting lots of validation on claiming the power back. That message is really resonating. Beautiful. I want to say something. Like when I want to say something about this was this is an important piece about, you know, after I had the Holy Spirit come into my life and everything changed. Um, I walked empty for a long time, which means that when I say empty, I didn't know, um, I, I didn't know yet about how this was all going to unfold. And I remember um, one, one day in January, after that September timeframe, I was walking down the street and I was questioning about, you know, who is God? What, what is God? Who is God? What is all of this with God? You know, because again, in the church, you know, it, in, I was born and raised as a Catholic and, um, you know, that, that's a whole nother story. But so I was walking by this, this Christian store and, the, and I was walking by outside and they had, um, they, they had this uh, thing sitting on their counter that had keychains. And as I was walking by, I saw this one keychain and I was in the question at the time of now exactly what is it that God is? What is that? What is God? And I'm looking into the store and I see this keychain and I walk up to it and there was the message. God is love. And you know what? I mean, I was broke. I was broke. But I, whatever money I had, I bought that keychain and I put my keys on it. And I said to myself, okay, now if I can do anything that I can do is if I can do everything with love with love, then that means that I'm serving God. That means that I'm doing my part. That if I do everything that I do out of love. And so in the discovery of who is God, what is God, what is this whole world, what is this all about? If I do everything that I do out of love, then I'm serving God. And that right there is my religion. That is beautiful. You know, I was just thinking yesterday that so many of us were brainwashed as children in the churches that we are not worthy. We are these despicable sinners, and no wonder so many of us feel we're not good enough. So I love that message, and sing it and shout it out that you are beautiful and perfect and magnificent. You are so loved. God did not make junk. You are beautiful. Yeah, and so, this, is the, this is the part that I want to share with the audience. See, this, I know this now. I, I don't have to... I don't have to uh, work on it. It's not even something that I, it's a knowing now within me after doing all the work, you know, after doing all the emotional core work, after doing all the work and going through the journey, I know this now. And that's why it's almost like the way I feel like I'm out of the way now. And now I get to just help other people um, shine the light on them. And that's why I love working with people that are ready to face 
their not good enoughs, that are ready to face their shadows, that are ready to face their projections, and put that nonsense to sleep, put that nonsense to rest, let that part of them go so that they can play a new movie. And the, mo the new movie that's going to be, um, the new movie that's going to play is going to be, when does the pain stop? When the victim, when the ego, when the addict are no longer playing parts in your movie and when they have been retired and now you are coming from a sovereign place, an empowered place, you're coming from the truth of who you are. Because as you've heard me say this week on Facebook Live, I talked about it, that we have just ended a 26,000 year cycle of living everything that we're not. The not good enough, the shadows, all the things. Carl Jung, Jesus Christ, Buddha, Krishna, 26,000 years we have been living everything that we're not. And ladies and gentlemen, the new paradigm, this new cycle beginning now, the Aquarian consciousness of where we are today is living and remembering everything that we are. And everything that we are, we haven't even begun to touch the surface. Amen. Our souls are like these beautiful birds that are ready to soar. So, Speaking of soaring, you have asked everybody this week, what is their desired outcome from being a part of this experience? So, Cornelia, what do you see for yourself next? Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Well, what I see for myself next is we're going to continue on the Change Your Mind Summit. We're going to actually um, roll another one out in the fall, and we're going to um, keep it going over the months up to the fall. I see uh, myself going to Africa, going on a safari. I see myself going to that orphanage that uh, Autumn uh, sent me pictures of, and I see that my Jaguar TV channel uh, which is is all upcoming and new that I'm creating TV channels for people that are ready to be seen to be heard on television and have their own TV channel. My TV channel is called Roku TV and Roku. I mean, not Roku TV. It's called Jaguar TV on Roku TV. And my channel is about new life, new body. And the Jaguar teaches us to live in impeccability and reach our highest human potential. And so all the radio shows and everything that I'm doing on Transformation Talk Radio will naturally be transferred over to Jaguar TV. So all those people that want to sign up for my exclusive offer, that's all going to be going on Jaguar TV also. So it's a bonus. It's something that I haven't talked about yet simply because I'm just about to create it now and release this now. That is fabulous. Well, we are now officially out of time. So thank you so much for Cornelia for putting all of this together, for shepherding everyone through the week so beautifully, for providing this space for the spotlight to be shined on each of the powerful 11 women that came forward. What a blessing this has been. And I just ask the divine to continue to bless this endeavor because it is so filled with power it is so ready to soar and expand and change our world for the better. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Cornelia, I'm Deborah Lu Pien, voice of the Akashic Records. We'll see you another time. Bye for now. Bye. You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.